other tone here. And today's guest is Vince Staples, who has one of my favorite songs this year. Um, I still listen to When Sparks Fly, like, at least five times a week. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank There's something about the mood of that song that that song and Baby Keem 16 are on constant repeat. <laughs> that's all over the place, but I feel that. <laughs> Shout out to Keem, man. That's the homie. He doing good right now. Yeah, I, lo I, lo I loved his album. But that particular song shows me that he's uh, he, he can go so much further with his music. There's no ceiling on his music. Yeah, King one on the one. Mm -hmm. um, Special. Pharrell, where are you guys? Where? New York. Yeah. yeah New York. She been up to Scott. I'm a, I'm a golfer now. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. I'm leaving the music business. <laughs> so have you traded golf? Uh, have you traded poker for golf? That was my question. It's very close. It's the first time I've ever done something new that I've thought, oh, this could replace poker. I realized that my I have a lot more rich friends who play golf that are willing to lose even more money. <laughs> <laughs> Good, cool, man. It is the only reason I'm trying to get good. The Gemini. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I respect golf. I just, um, I just can't really rock. Like, man, it's cool. Actually, you probably would like it, though. I did it a few times. It's actually very similar. I mean, not, not to bore everyone listening to this, but it's very similar to poker because when you start playing golf, uh, especially in poker, the more you learn about it, the more you realize you don't know. And it's constant learning yeah, experience. It, it's technical, right? Technique is super important. I it, it's technique, and then uh, shots play a different way. Yeah. And um, it's uh, based on uh, where you land to how you're going to hit it. So even if you practice a certain shot every you know every day in your backyard or wherever on the driving range, cool. where the ball lands on the grass is different every time. Since you rock with golf at so all. It, Nah, I'm not playing no golf. <laughs> I'm not playing no golf. I'm not gambling. I'm yeah, not going I, don't, I, I don't gamble. I don't like losing money. I just ain't never with Me that. neither. I couldn't imagine gambling. Yeah, I never started. I'm never going to yeah. start. So I think I played. Never a dice game. Oh, I shot dice. I ain't betting five. I ain't doing nothing. You, you did. Bro. I'm you did like man. nothing. I, nah, I, never. I, I played. I, I shot dice a lot. But like, the, not the vape. They're like, nah. I'm one never, time, I, um, I gambled one time. And I won my money back from like the cab. Like won like thirty dollars that I used for the cab. I said, yo, I'm up, I'm done. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I gambled. But Yeah, man, it's too uh too high risk, too low reward. <laughs> right, cool. right, right. You and P was talking about the show a little bit before we got started, man. Like, congrats on that, man. Oh uh, yeah, we've been working on it for a couple years. Uh it was an idea we had like in um in like 2014, 2015, that nobody wanted. So, uh, used the uh, music video budgets to kind of um, try to figure out what the idea was, um, start learning how to write scripts. And uh, yeah, we had a couple people who, well, not that many, when I mean a couple, I mean literally like two, maybe three people that was uh, trying to take it on. One of them was David Casp, so shout out to him for that. He did um, Black Monday on Showtime. He got a Showtime deal. The other one was Kenya. And um, yeah, we went with Kenya and um, Netflix. And we working on it right now. Hopefully we get to production next year and try to get it out soon. That's amazing. And Kenya is a great partner. Yeah, that's the homie, a good dude, really good dude. And um, very informative, which I think is important if I have to have people who Want to make sure that you understand um, process and also your mistakes and things like that. It's just something that you get with working with familiarity, which is why we went with him. Mm -hmm. Just you have an ability to have a more honest conversation than you would usually as you learn um, in other endeavors. So that was kind of just how we ended up going with him, just because of being able to have honest conversations and yeah, trust and things of that nature. So it's, it's turning out real good. And, and now you have a music supervisor. Oh man, hey look man, <laughs> maybe, I don't know how much you cost, I might have to do that myself. <laughs> you know, Netflix don't got the big budget. For real, how much is that Blackberry, that gold Blackberry gonna sell for? Yeah, I think that's probably gonna go for like 15. So many people are talking about this stuff. Is it, for real? Yeah. 
No way. It's crazy because um, mine is the first one, but then like we got all the other auctions coming behind it mm -hmm. and s sprinkled in between some of the other auctions in the next calendar year. I have like three other sales. So this first sale is 52 items. Well, how long did they be up? Huh? How long did they be up? So they gone? 10 days. Mm. Yeah. What made you want to um, do that? Uh, first of all, thank you for asking. Um, you know, that's a very good question. I started because my business manager was like, man, you know, you got 11 storages, you know, um, <laughs> and you got like all these archives, like, and what are you doing? Like you got to, you're just basically paying money every year mm -hmm. and you're not using any of this stuff. And I watched the Marie Kondo thing and uh, I really agree with that. Like holding on to a bunch of stuff, even though you're not doing nothing with it, it's just like holding on to that energy too. Um, kind of like how people look at hair sometimes. And, and I was like, all right, I'll just, you know, I'll tell some stories around it and I'll just get rid of it. Um, and then I thought about like all the different places that I would have to go to to get rid of some of the stuff, like some, some certain places, certain like platforms specialize in like footwear and apparel, mm -hmm. others specialize in like, you know, um, furniture and design and art. And there's no real one place fits all. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna tell my story, you know, essentially what is, ends up being the provenance for everything. I'm gonna tell my stories around all, all my items and I'm gonna get rid of these things. But then I started thinking like, man, there's shit that I got in my house right now that I don't use either. Like, I ain't doing nothing with it. Like, let's just get rid of it. And then when I took a step back, then I realized it was more than just those things and the stories behind them but I'm just, I'm just really going through like a transformational moment right now in my life, spiritual, spiritually. And there's just a lot of things, things, situations, people. I'm just at that place right now where I wanna, the only way that I can really ascend is I've gotta get rid of weight. You know, it's like a hot air balloon. You know, when you get rid of the sandbags, you know what I'm saying? You go higher. It's that time. It's ascension time for me because I am, shit, I am, I think I got, I think I'm basically on the other side of the solar system and I got like six or seven months to go before it will be 50 complete revolutions around the sun. I'll be 50 years old. So I need to do that. I need to get rid of all of this like extra weight. It's cool, good, bad, or indifferent, but it's just time. And it doesn't mean I won't make more things. It doesn't mean I won't design more things. And who knows? You got the only way to do it is to jump out the window. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. It's that time. So thank you for asking that question. Cause I, as much as I've talked about it here and there in the press, I don't think I've ever said that it goes far beyond the tangible items, but it's also people. And it's also like ideas that have weighed me down for too long. And I don't mean in a bad way. It's just, we're all meant to meet on a journey. Sometimes those journeys are, you know, you know, have a lifelong duration. And sometimes they're a little bit shorter than that. Sometimes they're really quick. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, it ain't even, there isn't a good or bad in it. It's just what's right moving forward. I need to be around people, ideas, things that make me lighter, not weigh me down. I feel like it's like an inclination for us to like fear letting go. And I don't know how that becomes a thing. I don't know, you know, when it's indoctrinated, but it seems like something that everybody deals with, no matter their background, no matter they walk a life, it just feels like we have this fear of 
one acknowledgement, two, but also moving on. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's, you know, we feel like it's a lack of respect for us to not mm-hmm. move on. It's a lack of, you know, acknowledgement to not move on. But I feel like a lot of people have that thing. And it's something that subconsciously happens. Like, we're not thinking about these things or these people or, you know, these ideas, these memories. But it's like, it's kind of hard to move forward I love for a lot of people, I feel. It is. Because you're right. It is. We're taught to be so physically dependent. But you know, the physical is the greatest illusion there is. What's real is the spirit. What's real is on that molecular level where the energy, where the real energy is at. That's, that's here. And, uh, and it is where we are taught. We are taught to fear death. We are taught to fear detachment. We are taught to fear uh, discomfort. When really, you were born at a certain time. And that time is the greatest proof of your purpose to be here and exist. And so if you have a purpose, you can't be scared to lean forward. None of us should be. I, I think that's why like, I do such a terrible job at telling my own story because I'd be, so, I'd, be so, I'd be so worried about what I'm about to do, so concerned about what I'm about to do that like, I, don't really, I don't really curate like, my past as well as I should. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really take my, like, I don't hold on to my failures as much. I just look at them as lessons. And sometimes people got to remember, no, you put that out and that didn't work. Like, damn, you know what? You're right. Because I just be on to the next. Yeah, that's good. You know, I don't, it don't, it don't wear me down like that. And the time, sometimes it do hit me hard. You know what I'm saying? When I put out in my mind, it hurt. I ain't going to lie. That, that, out, though. that didn't do what I wanted it to do egotistically and like, you know, the universe humbled me for that. But mm-hmm. eventually I got over it and I let it go. But yeah, you're right. You know, that you know, they they they, the system makes you fear if you let go. It's like being on like, you know, government federal subsidies. Mm-hmm. You know, the way that you're wired is like if you make more than a certain amount of money, then you're no longer eligible. So it makes you just fall oh, better. I better stay within I'm, I better stay within the line so I don't lose that and I don't lose, the, I don't forfeit free health care. Like, nah, the universe didn't put you here for that. That's, that's a help. But the universe put you here to lean forward. You can make 10 times what they said the limit is that makes you ineligible. You can make 10 times that. You make 20 times that. Like, lean forward. That's really what it is. To, it, that's what it's about, leaning forward. We was just kind of like talking about this too. Vince, do you know, um, do you know the time you was born? Uh, my mama do, I get asked that a lot. Uh, <laughs> Yo, I'm my, whole, uh, my, my whole thing don't make that much sense when you start to add it up. But um, yeah, matter of fact, I'm gonna ask right now because she used to be asking the question. Yo. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was um, it was in the afternoon though. Nah, yeah, we were just talking talk about that, about right now. and I had to do the same what, thing. I had to call my mom. Like cancer. I'm cancer. People don't just know that, bro. Scott, you know? It was uh, 7.50 at night, I think. 7.50 at night. Actually, I have, I have it in my phone, actually. Hold on, let me double check. Hey, mama, uh, uh, it's that question again. Uh, I'm doing an interview. They said they want to know what time I was born. Hold on. What did you say? 2.58. PM. There we go. All right, thank you, thank you, Mom. You're welcome, baby. All right. Two fifty eight. Two fifty eight PM. PM. What date and year? July second, nineteen ninety three. July second, nineteen ninety three. Two fifty eight PM. At uh, Kaiser and uh, at Kaiser Bellflower, California. In California. We didn't have no health insurance, so we had to go to Kaiser. We couldn't be born at uh, Long Beach Memorial like all the other people. Mm-hmm. Oh, we know that story. That's amazing. Look what it made, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's yeah, the point man, when they, I say yeah, purpose. They sleep on Kaiser, man. That's what I'm saying when it, when it comes down to purpose, right? Because of whatever it was, it made you. No, nah, definitely. I think I think that's um, an important thing. It's funny, like, I, I had this uh, conversation with a lot of the homies, right? Um, it's always like, oh, man, you're so close, or you so this. Or it's just like, to what, though? You know what I mean? Like, I don't really measure things the way that we kind of talk to in music because I didn't really grow up with much access to music. 
just because of a turning point. Like we didn't, I don't have no stories like going to the record store or, you know, and those stories are amazing when you hear them in music, but like, I don't have those stories of going to the record store, or going to no concerts or um, talent shows, nothing like that. And we grew up at a point in time to where it was like our iPods is a thing now. And it's like internet and, you know, things of that nature. Like we had dial up, but we had the 30 day free AOL disc from the front of the Stater Brothers. And, uh, you know, you can only get one of them every time you go to the grocery store. So, like, you might miss a month or two of internet. So I didn't really have, you know, the line wire type thing. And um, a lot of people would be like, yeah, man, like, especially working in a major label system, like, you know, all those tricks and all those things. I always uh, thought like, okay, move forward, like the what's next of it. And um, the way that things are created in. I think that's a very under appreciated standpoint. Like when you think about, in my mind, like anything that you might have seen, um, we didn't necessarily see, you know, and that's the funny thing about creating certain things, like it has its vantage point for everything and everybody's vantage point makes it what it ends up being. Even when you think about, you know, how big a Nightmare Before Christmas is as far as like branding and recognition and things of that nature, Jack Skellington and Disneyland Rise and shit like that. Like that was a very under underperforming um, movie based on what they wanted. And that's one of the biggest things in the catalog, like especially internationally. So I think it's just interesting, like when we think about how we create what what seems like a shortcoming today might be, you know, the greatest moment tomorrow. You think about Halloween, the movie that, you know, revolutionized, you know, the movie going experience and how horrors are shot, thrillers are shot, editing, um, stage design, all those things like that movie was in theaters for months and it was independent because it couldn't get picked up. And now everybody know who Michael Myers is, you know what I mean? So I think it's just interesting. It's an interesting world that we live in to where, you know, today doesn't mean tomorrow. And I think when you're creating, even though you should keep that in mind, it's really, really hard to because everything is so, you know, instant. Timing. Timing is... No, timing is everything. Timing. I got albums. If I would have put them out a year later, it would have been a way different conversation. Mm -hmm. So I definitely agree. Yeah. That's actually a, a, a question I um, always have for artists. Um, and for all, and both of you guys, uh, when you're actually in album mode making an album, does the song that you're currently working on inform the next song that you want to make so you can make a body of work? Or are you making it, each song independent and then afterwards you're like, oh, now I have something together? Yeah, different process. I mean, Vince, what's your process? Now I, I get into mine. Um, it depends. I think, um, I kind of got the whole idea and either fit or it don't, to be honest. I only got so much to like say. Or, and also in the beginning of my career, I didn't really have no help. So it's like, I'm dealing with whatever get emailed. So, you know, you can't really go based off what you hear, just whatever fit messaging. You know what I mean? I don't know anything about, I don't know keys, I don't know tempos, I don't know BPMs. I can barely, you know, get a bar structure right. So I don't, it wasn't really like, um, it's a big difference between like musicians and like entertainers and music, specifically rap music. And you have to have appreciation and understanding for that. And I knew I didn't fall into the musician part of it as far as knowing a lot about music. So I just had to go with, you know, what felt right at the moment. But like, I'm, I'm talking about like lyrical content, like the ideas that you're putting in each song. So like, let's say in your mind, you want to talk about certain things. And then in the moment, you put one of those bars in your song. And that's an idea that you knew you wanted to talk about. But maybe you'll make another song where that idea fits better. Mm -hmm. Does that whole song get scrapped? Or do you rework that? bar because you want to keep it in that song? I don't, I, I've been trying to learn how to do it, but I've never revisited a song in my life. Oh wow, really? It, how it is when it's recorded is when it's done. Really? Because like I said, I don't have no help. So like, I never had nobody put a bridge in a song. Like, if you know, I don't, all my songs is verses and hooks and it's nothing else because that's all, that's all I can do. Cause that's so, how you imagine it going. No, that's just all I can do by myself and it's nobody else in the studio. I'm just by myself for the first 10 years of my career. So it's like, if you, if the feature wasn't, uh, if it wasn't like Snow, Allegra, or somebody I knew personally, like it wasn't happening. So I didn't, it's, it's literally verse, hook, 
and then it's not where you get a beat. Like, you can have somebody try to rework the beat, but it's not really going to, they don't, it's not, it's not a priority because music is a, it's, it's, it's a commercial business, bro. You got to think, you got to live, I live, I'm a realistic person, right? So every time I come out, I sell 20,000 albums, why would I be putting a bridge and all this extra production in your beat? Who's going to do that if it's not going to monetarily benefit? And that's something we ignore, but it's a business at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So it's like, when we think about how it works, right? Um, I think for the most part, I just kind of, um, I just made what I felt like. I've never been like, oh, this is what I want to talk about. It's, I don't believe in all that stuff. All this stuff is marketing, bro. This is rap music. Like, James Brown was James Brown and one of the greatest artists ever, and his messaging is pretty similar for all his projects. Same with Stevie Wonder, same with Michael Jackson. Like, nobody told Smokey Robinson, oh, man, stop singing about love. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. I think, you know, it's just we got these measuring sticks that we kind of use to like put ourselves up or put the next person down, especially in rap music. But I always just made what I wanted to make. Like whatever I felt like at this point, I never had like a piece of paper and was like, this is what I want to talk about or this is like the, um, this is the direction. It's just like, like with Big Fish, he was like, oh, I want to make this. So I'm making it. And everybody's like, you tripping. And I made it. And, you know, on one hand, you can say nobody liked it, but it's also my highest selling album and streaming and it still goes well and things of that nature. So it's like, it just depends, like what you want out of it. I seen, I seen different. Um, you, you was what? No, no, no. Go ahead. From what you saying, I, I seen different people do different processes, and I, I actually seen both. I, I think what you saying, Scott, is like somebody going to to um, the studio to, to create an album. So I seen people say, okay, we need a street joint. We need a we need a party joint for the girls. Then we need a you know a conscious record. So I seen people do that. When I was recording, I, I think I was um, kind of fortunate to be working with them, like Pharrell and Chad, and just like you know Neptune's producers, because it was like almost like filling the blanks with them. Like, so I think as I, you know, learned more, I just came to a point where whatever feeling you get when you come in the studio, or whatever the beat said, I just did it and recorded it, and then at the end of it, it was like good song, bad song, or okay. Then we just had a collection of songs. That's the way that I, I seen it. Like if this song was like a the, the drums or whatever, and the, the chords was hard to me, and I just made a you know talking about drive-bys or whatever, then it was just that record. And then if it fit, like it was just a, a cool song, and that we 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 agreed that we gonna have twelve songs, and this was one of the best of the twelve. It was on a project, <laughs> but I think yeah, I mean, it's like music. Music is a feeling to me, yeah. man. Like when you go listen to like. Uh, not all of it, but when I listen to a lot of older stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of stuff wasn't heavily conceptualized. Yeah. It wasn't like, you listen to off the wall, like it's just music, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Of course, there probably was a conception or a through line, but that's why production is so important because that should be carrying everything musically. Like, that should be how you get, in my opinion, from point A to point B. Like, Agreed. you listen to an album like Portishead Third, like it just sound like a thing. Like. Mm -hmm. It's, I think music for me is like, how do you feel today? Exactly. Like, where are you at in this present moment? And put it out. Because if it's art, in that standpoint, that's kind of what art is. And you might feel like saying something, or you might feel like standing for this specific thing. But I, to me, it's mostly, you know, how you feel today, record it. And if you still feel like that in six months, then that's the lingering feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you need to express the most. Because a lot of feelings kind of come and go. But if you can have something, like my last project, we was working on it uh, uh, before COVID, COVID hit. We was in the studio, they said, yeah, y'all can't record no more. Uh, we're not giving y'all no more money. So uh, Kenny, uh, I was able to record uh, the Vince Stables project at Kenny's house. And then uh, me and Corey paid out of pocket to finish the, uh, the Ramona album. And um, some of those songs is two years old. But there was lingering feeling, but we recorded like almost 200 songs during COVID. That's the most I've ever recorded in my life. And, um, but with that, it was, um, it was kind of similar to what P was saying as far as with, uh, with the auctions and the new platform that, uh, they created. It was just like, all right, um, when it comes to home and speaking to these things, like my, uh, my friend Keish, uh, Kilo Keish, who does a lot of my artwork stuff, she makes music and sculptures in the front yard on the Tuesday. She do all kind of She was like, yeah, a lot of your music is um, like kind of an anthology of like kind of your home and trying to chronicle, you know, your feelings, and, like kind of like a time capsule in a sense. And I was like, all right, I'm sick of doing 
Yeah, so my last project was like, here, I'm gonna do this and I'm never gonna do it again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just because you don't want to do something don't mean you don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, I'm from California, really, and I've been here my whole life, and my family was from point A to point B to where we are now, I was born in the ghetto. So I can make all of it. I know every part of slang. I know every pocket. I don't know every street. I know every bus stop here. I'm going to make a perfect version of that just because I can. And that's what that album, that's what the Ramona album ended up being. But the Vince Staples project is um, more something. I listened to that this morning. I don't listen to music, really. I don't listen to my own music a lot, like very often. But I listen, I go to that because it kind of fits more into like what I would listen to. Like the stuff I listen to is um, people wouldn't expect, you know, probably, I guess. But um, yeah, I guess to kind of to like answer your question in long-winded fashion, like it's just how you feel in that moment. And I made both of those projects at literally like the same time, like they were done at the same time. So um, I think it was just two different feelings. Mm -hmm. I, I think when you aim too though, Scott, like real quick, I, I think when you aim, when you go in the studio aiming at a specific sound or, you know, message you're trying to do, I think you kind of like, you're missing the feeling. Like like Vince said, when you go in there with a feeling, it's like... It's, it's not inspired by the yeah, feeling. Yeah, when it's not inspired by the feeling. Like if I got a, a, a checklist of, I need, like I said, girl record, so-and-so, so-and-so, and I go in there, the producer send you a beat, and then I like, I'm trying to make this song into whatever that's on my checklist, I think you're missing the feeling of it, what it could just produce or create by you, if you just go in there like with a you know blank mind and just go in there and you hear the, you hear whatever it says to you, then you create that. I think that's that's the best way to be married to it. I think I remember one time we did a. Record and you can't team. under you can't underestimate your your audience too. Mm -hmm. Like you can't underestimate the intelligence of your audience. Like they know when you're trying. Yeah, yeah, to exactly. They can see you. Like. They can see you aiming, right? That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. in, in so many words, I remember we had did a record and you. I think I made a comment. You, you'll never remember this. You was, I was like, um, man, we're going to miss the summer. And then I remember you said, you was like, man, the summer got to catch up with this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I was like, yeah, I'm tripping. It ain't like it's like one summer. Like, shit, next summer coming, like, this record going to be, it's like, <laughs> so he, he, when he said that years ago, you probably don't even remember that. I don't. Yeah. I was like, where? It was, uh, I think it was Strong Out, actually. And I was like, damn, it was like the summer. I felt like by the time we, do everything the label was gonna do, we was gonna miss the summer. And you was like, man, the summer gotta catch up with this. You worry about the summer. I said, all right, okay. So that changed me right then. So it's crazy. Crazy. I, I think like for, for you, P, you probably think much differently because you make your own projects and then you're making projects for other people. So you have to like, I think you probably enjoy that more actually, that you have to like put yourself in so many different masks. I, uh... My best work is always when I'm working for other people. What you know, and they don't use it. The mm -hmm. Like they, there's stuff that they use and there's stuff that they don't use, and and they're the ones that I'd be so hung up. Like man, how you not f with this? And it's because they don't hear it for themselves. And I might play that same composition for somebody else and they love it and then they put it out and then the first person I made it for might come back and be like yo why didn't you play me that and I'd be like yo that was that but they couldn't hear they couldn't hear it when I was yeah. when I was doing the reference That's crazy. they you know what I'm saying but so my this is the difference between me and you because if I would have made that as soon as it came out it was a hit the first person I would send it to is the person <laughs> I passed on <laughs> but see, but see, but see, it's, but see, it's past that though because music is not for one person. Like yeah. I think it's communal in a sense. Like the, when you think about you know the structure of like a Motown, and it's like all right, we got this song, and we finna see who can execute this song. So you got a lot of intersection, a lot of covers, and you know Smokey Robinson writing 15 songs, and then all right, Jackson Five, your turn. Okay, yeah. Diana, y'all turn. Okay, now it's my turn. And it's I think that's when we think about you know the to me like the best era of music like they didn't have technology bro and it sounded better than 80 percent of the stuff that come out was, was written better the instrumentation sounds better and it's because it was it was just for the music like who can execute this song if you can execute this song then it's your song okay you a second art so now you finna put out a cover of it but it's just this song, like, you know what I mean? Izzy Brothers, Tim Chase, and Jackson 5, these dudes was all sharing songs, intersecting on different labels, different platforms, on different tours, but it was about the music, essentially. And I think that's the beauty of what P just said, is like, okay, 
even if this don't work out perfectly for this artist, it's still a song and it exists within the ecosystem that we all have to kind of contribute to. And us being able to do that and move laterally is, is I think, a very important thing in music. Yeah, and you know what? The other thing, when you talk about that, the reference that era you're talking about, there was a lot of humanity there too. Like a lot, those were humans yeah. playing all those instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can't be discounted either. So that just make it immediately feel very different than a lot of the music that mm -hmm. is made today. You yeah. know, our music like is real, is there, but a lot of it is computerized. You know, mm -hmm. it's digitized. It's like it. You know, there really was string sections playing that music back it's then. It's crazy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There really was like jam sessions. For Imagine long. a jam session, bro. You know, it's crazy. I don't even know if you remember this. It was. A, it was. A, what was that? Uh, dinner in downtown LA at LA Live before a Ferg show. And you had said, um, it was a couple people there, it was like some Asian people, but you was like, yeah, uh, we eliminating the artists and in a couple years, it's just gonna be algorithms with no artists and it's gonna play music based on how you feel. And this was like, had it was like years wow. ago. It was like when you put work out. Yeah. Crazy. And it made sense to me, but everybody was like, oh, that makes no sense. And now we got, you know, the debacle we had a couple months ago and just, um, all these other things happening. And I feel like he, when people are, it's like we looking around, we eliminating humanity. Yep. We trying to sell, you know, a human process without humans. Yep. And then we turn around and be like, hey man, what happened? Like, why don't nobody like it? It's because it's void of, mm -hmm. you know what yep. I mean? That's right. And there are algorithms now that are making music and it's getting there, man. It's getting to a place where it's starting to be better, but it will never replace the human, the human spirit. So they got algorithms that's making music, not making right playlists, now. making writing actual so, music. Writing songs, right? oh, this playing shit. music, what, what, writing what, One of the homies has a program that's in beta right now where you can like intersect music. You can be like, vocally you can want, like you enter like they have artists in a database and it's like, it's like they, they using it to make samples. So you can be like, all right, I want to hear Aretha Franklin on like some Pink Floyd and it'll give you like wow. at a certain uh, tempo and key and it'll give you like, like almost like a reference track with the things that you try to encompass. That's like, crazy. it's crazy. Yeah, no, we here. I mean, they do that with visual art too. They have. There's like visual art that like the, the AI makes and this shit is fucking haunting. Bro, it we, just scours all the it's internet. It's crazy. You could say dog climbing tree and it'll draw something. <laughs> what? Yes. What the fuck I mean? Yes. Yes. I don't yes. like that, man. Uh, I, not, that's, that's scary. I don't know, bro. You, it's, it's already over. People don't realize it's we, already we, over. We're gonna be the Terminator, we, dog. Until we realize what we up against as a species, technology moving fast, bro. Technology leads le leads laws. Like all the laws follow the technology. It ain't wow, the other way right. around. Yeah. They create laws to keep up with technology. Technology is gone, bro. Yo, the real leaders of the real world, it's like the guys who make the phones, all the phone services. That's it. They, they, they are in control of everything. I don't give a fuck. To me, it's the media and it's the phones. Those are the two culprits. So it's too the late. The two basically. catalysts. If you want to know all the shit, you want to know where everything boils back to. It boils down to these platforms. It boils down to the media, the press machine, and it also boils down to access. Those are the three things. You know, we got we got too much media, too much access, and too many machines. 100. <laughs> percent When I was a kid, you had to go home to get on MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. you could be anywhere doing anything. Yep. Anywhere. And by the way, and and your phone is telling you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. It ain't giving you unbiased information. It's talking to you the way you want to talk, the way you want to be talked to. It's speaking through to you through all the. It's it's already it's sending all the articles it knows you want to read, mm -hmm. whether they're right or wrong. That's what we, we hear right now. That's the algorithm, right? Yeah. We gonna, it's so, so the Terminator movie, I, I've been saying this for a couple of years. I think we talked about it. It won't happen, man. I'm telling you. I'm gonna. It's happening, bro. No, I'm talking about like... Yeah, Boston Dynamics. Yeah, you don't Boston be, you don't be seeing yeah. the, uh, the little robots climb over the wall. He's just flipping. He's got one. Yo, it I flips. got two of them. Yeah. You got them. Just That's hilarious. <laughs> and they look, they look scary as hell too. But what I'm saying is like, That's fine, like all the movies we've been seeing, like when the, when the, when the, um, the human be like, um, hey, 
turn off. And the be like, no, can't turn <laughs> off. I'm like, hey, stop. And like, no, you're, you're, um, well, you got to think, fam, also, it, it goes humanity. deeper to what you're saying, though, because um, life does very much so imitate art, which is why it's important to think about the things that we create and the things that we say, because you don't know if the people that's working in the robotics companies was watching Terminator and being like, I want to make that. You know, we it, you see it a lot in our community, bro. Like, I promise you, bro, I've been out here for a long time, and until Chief Keith came out, it did not look like this in these streets, bro. But now then it's 30 and Draco and all, people listen to like, like kids is hearing Percocet in a song and then going to get high and then OD in. Like I see it literally every day, like literally every day. And it's because of the music. I'm from a place where like, it wasn't nobody with like, you know, say like Dreads and Trues and things like that. Long Beach was always like kind of alt, Los Angeles kind of street culture. And then as soon as the music changed, it, we looked just like everybody else. And that was very telling to me because Growing up, we was like the place with the weirdos. You know what I mean? And then it's like, then it just looked like everywhere else. It just shows that it's too much access. Cause like we used to, even though it might not sound as interesting as it is, like I think it's important to live on an island. That gives us differentiation. And I feel like we don't have that no more. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of because of what we're creating. Yeah. Yeah. We got to create better stuff. The, Newer stuff too, I think. It goes back to what people said earlier, like we need new experiences. Yeah. And you can't get to it when everybody's speaking the same global language. I mean, we want to be spiritually connected globally, but we need some differentiation so that there can be some distinction. All those things are healthy. But right now, this is the, the internet is the Tower of Babel. Mm. It's all connected. It's all one language. Yeah. And I wish it was well, humanity, I, I, I but didn't it ain't, really follow it ain't what... humanity. It's like homogenization. I'm telling you, B. Somebody's going to try to turn it off one day and they're going to say no. <laughs> and this shit gonna like, um, what, what was Elon's uh, robot about? Did you? I didn't really uh, look into what it actually did. That was it. So basically, the, the 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 AI got so intelligent from just I guess interaction with humans, it realized or said to itself, "Y'all gonna fuck the world up." But if you keep doing that, and I ain't gonna let you do that, I was programmed to protect humans. So basically, I'm doing this for your own good. That's what's gonna happen. No, she gonna say no. Watch. I robot. Yeah, but what was what was his? He just made a. Um, uh, he just came out with his own robot that's going to be available for. Oh, you're talking about Elon. Elon, the new robot. Elon, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what. What does it do? Did he say what it man, does? I don't know. I don't, I'm scared of. This. I don't want that. <laughs> I'm not with this, man. I ain't with it. It's too like, late, bro. You no, know, it's too late. We gone. But I'm not with all, like. But the only thing far. is, the only thing the, the phone is already there. The phone is warming you up for it. You, yeah, you think phone, you're not with it? But if you love your phone, no, you're in trouble. I know what you're saying. But because the phone, the, phone is, the phone just doesn't talk back. And by the way... It's, it talk back? No, no, no. It doesn't... It on doesn't, its own. It isn't defiant to you. That's what I'm saying. But, it, but, if you robot, enjoy, but if you enjoy it doing what you're saying... No, nah, bro. Then you need to know that you're welcoming in. It's controlling your vantage point. Yeah. It's That's Siri, true. Yeah. Siri, Alexa. Like the phone can't pick you up and throw your ass out the window. That, that, that robot going to be able to... Throw you out like it was gonna be just buck and like yes. No, you ain't going outside. Also, do some things that you wanted to do for you that it won't do for anybody else, and you'll like that. Yeah, in the beginning, it's gonna be cool, just like every movie. Go get coffee. Go 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 walk the dog. The shit gonna do all that. If you cool, if you with that, you gotta be with the other part. When the when the the the, the master system, like I said, when they should say no. If you enjoy, and I throw your grandma ass through a window. That's when it, they go my like, like, oh my God, I don't we, want it. But we have been we have been accepting these things since day one. Yeah. For example, the car. Right? Yeah, I gotta hear this. What, when what? when when in the in the early nineteen hundreds, when the car was being conceived, mm -hmm. there were people who loved their relationship with their horses. They're like, listen, <laughs> I named my horse. Yeah. That's yeah. why people name their cars, by the way. I named my horse. I love my horse. Oh, I know that. You know, my horse, you know, you understand, my horse is super powerful. Yeah. So in order to get some of those people that were so old school and didn't want to really move on with the times, they started, like, counting things by horsepower. Right? Got it, got it, got it. Cool. But the car itself can save a life. Somebody get hit by something or whatever, ambulance come, picks it up. The car, the, the, the vehicle is what gets them there, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, 
It ain't like an ambulance ain't never killed nobody either. Yeah. And so when you're when you're willing to accept the good in something, you got to know, you know what. Well, that's what I'm saying. The bad come with the good. That's what I'm saying. Right. And so if you're ever going to enjoy... Oh, you're saying I got to accept the You got to accept. If you're going to accept that there's good things that could be in this technology and that you welcome it, you got to know that like the other, other side of it is there. Yeah, but I told you, I don't like it. I'm cool with not... I, I don't need a... <laughs> so you're willing to go back to a flip phone. <laughs> I'm not talking about the phone. Okay, I guess this is what... That's where it all boils down to. The phone as far as I'm willing to go, I guess. I'm cool What's with the, the phone. difference? I just told you a robot can harm you. A, a you robot know? ain't nothing but like a phone. No, sir. I'm telling you. A no, robot sir. ain't nothing but a, with a phone and arms and legs, bro. That's the part I don't like. Arms and legs. So a you phone. want the operating system. You I don't, don't want the robot, period. You don't want the oper- you, you want the operating system. You just don't want it to be, and you don't want the hardware to be humanoid. I don't like that. Yeah. Okay. But by the way, if your phone, if your phone, if Siri somehow gains the ability to be, you know, uh, you know, artificially intelligent on a level. It's and too has, far now. And, and, has, uh, and has some autonomy, because she can answer questions. Yeah, that's too right? far for me, too. That's Siri scary. can kill you quick. Right now. <laughs> Siri can get you flipped, bro. You got to think about this. If, if Siri picking your restaurants and also telling you your calorie intake and your cholesterol, mm, all they got to do is lie, you and you're going to have a heart attack. You. <laughs> you're right. They don't got to right. smack you to kill you. He's right. I ain't thinking of that. You're right. That's what I'm saying. And if, I, but if, I just said, if you I love said the we, convenience of it now, you, I said you we need to know it. We, I said we already too far. So do you like your phone? Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool with the phone. That's far as I'm going, bro. I well, get what he's saying. I'm just saying, if you really felt the way you felt, you'd be using a flip phone. Why? I had an old, I had an old iPhone up until like a couple weeks ago. I only got it because it broke. And there, like when I went to my, uh, my writing room and I had a new phone, like everybody was happy for me. It was crazy. <laughs> Like, oh, you finally got another phone. Yeah. <laughs> it do this, it do that. It was like, I feel what Pete's saying. People love them phones. No, man. we crazy. love it. I, I, I love my phone. Yeah, that's all I'm just saying. But that don't, that's not a robot, bro. Yeah, it is. It's not a robot, man. It is, bro. Did you see the, did, did you see the, um, the commercial of the robot? You saw it. You saw it, Vince. Did you see the, um, the, um, the press thing they put out? Of the robot hat, walked in and shit like, yeah. Yeah. no, that ain't a that's phone. The first one. Look how small that phone was, bro. <laughs> that's the first look one. Look at this big ass, like, look at the difference in these that's two the devices. Wow, like, look at that, dog. Wow. This that's shit is ridiculous. Phone. Like, how it would need to be this big, bro? They, they, they snuck it too. <laughs> that was big back then. Pause. Like, yeah. Remember these? Oh man, remember them guys? Yep. Crazy. Wow. That's crazy. That's when they was. That's, they crazy, was, that's when they was. This was fire. Was the baby, when this came out, that was the baby food right there. That's baby food. Yeah. What, we, one of yeah. what we on right now? We on a four course meal. So what is a robot then? Dessert? No, I'm just. Man, look, the little homies, like my younger homies, don't even know how to like call you. It's FaceTime only. Yeah, 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 and yeah. It's yeah like, that's true. Now, now you feel like you see them every day. I hate that like, though, they, You bro. know what I mean? Because they look at your face as it's moving. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you think it about it from like, their point of view, it's like, yo, how are you only just listening to someone's yeah, voice? Right. Yeah, you right. Fucking seance? You're right. You're like, right. You're right. Like, right. yo. I hate FaceTime. Yeah, I hate random FaceTime. But when you talk to a person in person, it's not like you go blind until the conversation's <laughs> over. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're right. So they want to see that. I had a similar thought the other day. I was just like, man, I was like, man. And love subtitles. I'm so mad that I spent most of my life not having subtitles on everything I ever watched content wise. Nice. And I wish there were subtitles in life. In life. I wish there were subtitles for every conversation that I had. I do feel it, cheated. Because. In a little Google Glass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're all right. They, they're going to do good, man. That's, that's going to happen. Man, listen. But that's but I but I understand the little homies like. Nah, that, the, the, he know, right. He imagine right. Imagine them. Imagine you only get right. and just see you're like yo a black screen. And it get, it's way deeper than that, bro. Imagine like. I think we tripping. You gotta think about the environment which you grew up in, like having to take the bus or like the blue the blue line downtown Long Beach to like the Artesia station or something like that. You learn how to talk to people. You learn how to be polite. You learn how to be able to get out of certain situations like based on manners. These kids is 13, 12, like, hey, hey give me an Uber. <laughs> like, yeah. so you missing out yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. the people that like, I, I run into people all the time in like music and later on in life that like from childhood that I seen randomly, like you might know a dude from two cities over cause you caught the bus over there to go try to uh, meet a girl at the movies or something like that. And that could be somebody later on in life where you might have some sort of commonality, some sort of bond with like, 
even though we have all this access, our social skills are diminishing. Like we kind of stuck in this bubble yeah. now because it's like, it's you don't even got to say hello to nobody no more. Like people is meeting online, which is also a beautiful thing, but it's like we missing the day-to-day -day interaction that we used to have, which I feel like kind of makes you a better person. Like, you know what I mean? I agree. And um, yeah, man, it's, it's becoming a thing. That's that's crazy though, because you write about the FaceTime, man, and it's mostly younger people. And and that's wild, like P said, because I used to be like, yo, damn, why why is they FaceTiming me? Right? But I'm old. <laughs> they looking at me like, why you just want to talk on the phone? Yeah, why do you want to sit in darkness? Wow. I'm old. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's just crazy though, because like just seeing your phone ring, like Yeah, and the big screen <laughs> It's never, it's never not a FaceTime anymore. Yes. And it's just showing you like the difference and how like the world is changing. World you know what changing, I'm saying? Bro. I'm, I'm not changed. With it. I'm not with the FaceTime thing. Yeah. What you mean you're not with it? I hate it. Just random joints. I'm cool. Like text me. I'm about to FaceTime. Let me. You know what I mean? Let me get. You know. Just. But it's the same thing as a phone call. It's just greater technology. Yeah. No, now. you're right. So they looking at it like I'm tripping. You are. You rather FaceTime? Yeah. Really. Do you want to have a conversation and do you go blind until the conversation's over? <laughs> no, but and just listen no. to them. That's what they're doing. They're like, "Yo, bro." Nah. They're trying because they're trying to connect with you visually, energetically. They're trying to connect with you. I get that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't with it. I ain't with it. In ten years, your phone ain't. If they finna take it out the phone like a CD player out the car, yeah, you going it's, it's FaceTime only. FaceTime only. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Wow. That be the only time you don't see a person's face. I'm with that. And even then, you might want to, they, they might be, you might be FaceTiming with a goddamn uh, uh, face visual, with a visual in the dashboard. Like an um, emoji like a joint. regular radio, just talk to the person. By the way, all the sci-fi films, you've been doing that for 30, 40 years yeah, already. Right. It's like, Zzz. You know, you talk to the person. That's, but that's life imitating art. Like, we trying to be Star Trek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Star Wars, oh, they yeah. just pop up on the console in the spaceship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm with all that. I just ain't really with the robot. I ain't had the robot yet. <laughs> Do you use the self-driving on your car? Not really. I need. I, look, man. I get it. We want to save the planet, but we need that gas, bro. <laughs> or I'm, and I'm with the hydrogen cell too. But that's sitting at that charger, bro. That's not for me. Yeah. But I'm also. I don't. I ain't spending a whole gang of money, so I ain't, I ain't gonna get no other car because I done already committed to this Tesla. So I'm gonna ride it to the break. But I like Teslas, man. It time is so important, bro. Like, I didn't notice it till I got that car. Like you losing like thirty minutes an hour out of your day, charging, sitting at that thing. Yeah, he gonna figure it out. It's though. crazy, bro. Elon gonna figure it out. He yeah. always do. He had a jingle. ten minute charge or something coming. He gonna have. Yeah, it got it got it gotta be, but it's just crazy because it's like that 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 thirty five seconds at that gas station yeah, yeah. <laughs> in comparison to that thirty minutes to an hour. It just I never really thought about time until that car really made me think about time because I don't live in L. A. I live pretty far. Just because I can't, I refuse to live in LA. So, um, yeah, bro, like just having that journey and then having a like almost reset is crazy what it do to you mentally. Like when you get in the flow of things, it's, it's very interesting. You can't get the charger at your house? I got it in my And it takes. You know, I live far, bro. <laughs> live far, you know what, though? Far. In Formula One cars, the brakes can absorb the uh, kinetic energy and, and, put it, and, and put it back to the charge. That's how hybrids work, right? Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, I think. I think he needs to, like, I mean, I just think it would be interesting to do, like, more of an exploration on that and see what more they can add. You like know? you said, he going to figure it out. He, he working on a robot, man. Yeah, hey, man, that, put the robot down. Know, but also that, the, the hydrogen cell and stuff. Figure that out, man. Out of Asia, that's, that's going to, I think that's really going to work. Because, you know, even environmentally, like, being able to use water is, um... I think um, yeah, like Toyota got a. Don't they got a hydrogen cell? I think Toyota, yeah, Toyota. Yeah. I'm sure other companies do. Yeah, but other than the that, Toyota, other than I the charging know, time, got it. Um, you like the Tesla? A couple people got it. Other than the charging time, it's cool. It? But you want gas? You ain't one of them. It's my thing about Tesla, right? Not even that. Like it's, it's bro. You know, um, it's a hundred thousand dollar car with felt underneath the like dashboard, you know what I mean? It's like, money is, kinda, I get it, I get the capitalism of it, but it's like, you're gonna charge me a hundred, like, this is gonna be the same price, 
as like a cayenne, like I'm gonna need some leather, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like yeah. I'm, I'm gonna need some. Like you got to give me a little bit of something. Yeah, I get it. I get it. That's crazy, man. What's next for you, bro? What you got coming up besides? The, uh, I know you're working on the show. But um, uh... man, that's it. Uh, that we got some other uh, TV stuff. Mm-hmm. Other than that, man, I'm just living, bro. Like I'm chilling. Like um. That's it. I ain't got nothing else going. I I saw you want you want to do acting. I don't want to do nothing. I'm just living, bro. Whatever makes sense for where I go. <laughs> That's what I'm cool with. Like I don't really have. I've never had any kind of like career goals. To be honest, I never. Like it's never been one thing I ever was like I want to do that. I don't know why. It's just not. But it's working for naturally, you. Naturally, like something about me. It really is. It's working for you. It is. I think you're a leader, dude. Too, dude. Yeah. I I got I got excited, man, when I saw you had a um. That commercial, man. The, the, uh, is it Acura? Oh, the Acura commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man, it was cool. Like, it was a good experience. Like, just, um, I, I kind of like doing stuff like that. Being like a part of, like, you know, just kind of getting into creative and having conversations with people and not just being like, oh, yeah, insert rapper here. Um, I like being able to have that kind of um, opinion on the product and, you know, the launch of the product and stuff like that. So that's always a, a good opportunity. Wow, that that's actually it could be a cool album title or a song title. Insert rapper here. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> but like P said, man, um, I feel like I feel like TV and film, man, is your thing. It's like yeah, it's it's definitely another part of your. Uh, I can see you of really. your journey. Shit, in that level. Yeah, it's funny, man. Like, it's I, I, I tell people all the time, like when I just to, to be honest, like when I was. I had to put out this last project, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna chill for a, a little bit. And I had certain people that I was like, man, nah, like, you so good and blah, blah. I'm like, but what does that mean? And it's like, oh, nah, you just can't, you can't let these people, like, you can't let these other people um, uh, take your spot, take your lane, like, you know, the ego and stuff like that. But it's like, all right, I could be Will Smith before I can be Jay Z. So why would I just blatantly ignore that and try to do what everybody else is doing. But I mean, I, I get it. But um, I, like I said, music is just, you know, art and then they were just creating stuff, bro. And um, like my life is, uh, my whole life has just been like thinking and like kind of um, weighing variables, like kind of solution based, you know, I had a lot of roadblocks. So uh, I always like trying to get past those things. So I think that's kind of why I create the way that I create is like, and also, you know, a lot of it is just marketing the optics and, um, I got unusual optics. So I think in te- film and television, it's just more full circle than music is. So I think when a lot of people you know, say the things that they say, like you go into a film or you go into a television show looking for thoughtfulness. And I think that's why it'll be a good endeavor for me to kind of get into it because that's kind of my strong suit. Yeah, and you also have vision and very sp- specific, distinct vision. I think that's amazing. That's dope, man. It is. So, and, and a c- consistent point of view. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, we all got a consistent point of view. We just gotta believe in it. Um, I was I was lucky enough to have you know parents that uh would ask just as much as they told. You know what I mean? So, uh, I think that's important. Like you know, gotta have people around you that understand that you do have a point of view and a perspective and kind of want to cultivate that. So I, 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 I was looking at that situation. I, I think I know what movie you should do. Did you ever see um, a version of it for you? Did you ever see that movie back in the day uh, called Talk Radio? Mm-mm. It was an Oliver Stone movie. It, you should watch it. No, do you remember it, Pharrell? I remember it vaguely. I, I love it. Oliver Stone films. It was about a radio uh, guy who... Uh, I did a call-in show. I don't, I don't want to tell you, tell too much because I forget what would ruin the plot if I tell you, because it's been a while since I watched it. But I'm gonna send it to you. Oh, yeah, send it to me. Yo, man, I um, I just thought of something too. I remember the first. Well, I don't know if this was the first time we met. I remember y'all. Y- y- you was on tour. Um, I think it was Art Future. Y'all came to to the Nova. This this um. This venue in Norfolk, in Virginia, man, to this day, that is the craziest show I ever been to. Like, like, they had it, 
The build. Yeah, you talking about the Earl uh, Doris tour? I know exactly. Yo, what man, listen. They was doing a lot. The wildest thing, cause so I went, I went there, and the kids, man, the, the building was literally shaking. I ain't never seen that happen in Nova. Like the building was shaking. Somebody on the second floor threw a trash can over the balcony, right? On the crowd. Nobody in the crowd was mad. They started picking the, the trash up. They started throwing the shit on other people and just was like, ah! They threw the trash can, like just threw the trash can, threw the joint. I was like, this the liveest shit ever. Wow. It was crazy. That was that was it. Yeah, and it's funny, like just uh, when Earl came back, um, it was it was so much uh, excitement, kind of surrounding him. But also, he has such a different experience, which I don't think he gets credit for in his music enough, is um, being able to be introspective and insightful with you know the weight that he had. Because when he came home, he didn't do what anybody wanted him to do. He made. Um, art, and that's something you see from Tyler and from Frank, from uh, Sid, uh, Steve Lazy, from everybody that comes from that tree. Like everyone just kind of makes what they want to do. So dope. But you know, him doing that at the height of you know everybody kind of waiting for him, and then still being able to go perform, still being mm -hmm. able to write, do all these sessions, acclimating to you know a different lifestyle. I think you know he doesn't get enough credit for that because his shows when he first came back were, you know, Crazy. pandemonium, but he's got, you know, Gil Scott references and like all this, all this deep introspective writing. And, you know, the production was like 60, 70 BPM because that's kind of where he likes to live. And he was able to get that kind of turnaround with the older stuff and the newer stuff. Like he did a really good job of balancing two worlds. And I don't, I don't think we ever gave him enough credit for that. Like that was a very, very difficult thing to do. Shout out to Earl, man. Yeah. He one of the ones. I always said that. Yeah, for sure. It's crazy. That was the craziest show I've ever been to, man, to this day. I threw a trash can on the crowd. The crowd picked the trash can up and just, like. Bro, you know, it. still to this day, one of the craziest songs I think you did was We Want Smoke. Oh yeah, I knew you was gonna say that. <laughs> I knew you was gonna say that. Yeah. That shit's so visual, bro. Mm-hmm. That shit crazy, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, that's. How is he moving? But he's frozen. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> nah, man. It's like we got a lot of stuff. We got like three or four goals. I was looking at um, I was listening to him the other day, um, trying to figure out kind of how to go about it. Like that's one thing I'm trying to learn how to do is revisit music and um finish it, complete it, make it, you know, well-rounded. Um, yeah, because you said- Yeah, I think that's my next record. thing to try to do in music, like especially with the last project I put out, like sitting on it yeah. for those years and just kind of trying to perfect it, like I was really happy with what happened with it. Now you said on another record, you said, last time you could try me, it was all right pee over airbrush teeth. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's one of my favorite ones. Oh, that's that's the one I was listening to other day. Dope. So you say you 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 don't like revisiting music, like oh you you trying to you trying to get better with that. Like what what is it? What you think it is? Like why you don't really rock with it? You just done with it when it's. I mean it's not it's just it's all access, bro. Like I didn't have um, a lot of production. I didn't have a lot of you know feature type situations. I didn't really have nobody to sit there and teach me how to make music. So. I just didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, to this day, I still don't even really know what the fuck a bridge is. And I don't know the difference between the hook and the chorus. Like, this is shit that's just music shit that you got to be around. I didn't really have the opportunity. Now, over time, like, you know, I would meet um, people like uh, James Fauntleroy, like Frank Ocean, uh, Adrian Young, um, Terrence Martin. Like, of course, I know these people. Um, I work with No ID for, on my first project. But then he was, uh, he uh, switched his situation over at Universal, so that was only for one project. And I'm also with Dahi, but Dahi was working on the Donald Glover projects for a long time and some a lot of the Kendrick stuff. So I have had people that have had help, but I just, that have helped me, but I never was able to be like, all right, I'm gonna be in the studio for six months. And also financially, like, I ain't, I didn't grow up in a situation where like, you know, when I had money, when I signed my advance, then we had somewhere to stay. Before that, it was nothing. So I had to stay on the road. I was doing 70, 80 shows a year. 
just to try to keep all the lights on. So I didn't have enough time to sit down and really learn how to properly make music, which is why all my stuff is just verse, hook, verse, hook, verse, hook. It's over. Every single song. I don't really have much that's like really built out or chord progression, uh, switch ups in the beat, things like that, because like I would get, you know, it, 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 was, it was placement based for a lot of people. And so I've never really had the time to be able to sit down and be taught how to make music. So whatever I learned, like it took me 10 years to learn how to control my, you know, octaves in my voice. And when I'm rapping, you know what I mean? It took me three albums to go find my own engineer, had whatever engineer they gave me until um, FM. So it's like, that's five projects. So I think it is, I just never had the access to kind of figure it out. And we were so busy trying to hustle that we never sat down and was like, all right, how do we make this work? But it's really hard to make m money in this industry. You know what I mean? So. Well, P is uh, the master of the bridge. I mean, he's yeah, he's the bridge yeah. master. That type of stuff is important to me. You know what I mean? Um, because, you know, like I said, my parents is old, bro. Like my mom had me when she was 40 years old, like basically. So, um, I didn't have no reference to like, you know, my older sister is in her 50s, you know what I mean? Like my mom had her, she was 15, and my family was you know, pretty much in the street. I didn't have no family that, really, you know, was into anything like this. So all I have is my life experiences type thing. So, um, yeah, man, now that I'm older and I have different life experiences, I think those allow me to be able to go into those other avenues and learn how to do different things. But I was always going to be somebody to try something like, who was working on the show, um, Calmatic, the director was like, hey man, this show not gonna work unless you write the script. So you're gonna have to download Final Drive for hundred dollars, use it like this, 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 and this. And um, another one I write is Maurice Williams, uh, sat on the phone with me and taught me how to do it. And then I'll start writing the scripts, you know what I mean? Because just of necessity. And a lot of the stuff I've done has been because of necessity. So now that it's not necessarily the case, I think it'll be a good time to kind of explore artistically and, and know whatever medium it happens to be because you know you got the time and effort i ain't really worried about rent so mm -hmm. you know i think that's a privilege and, and there's um writing like uh for tv and film could be really fun uh you know you can explore a lot more than your music because there's so much more time to develop ideas yeah that's easy man but the thing is funny thing about it, you got time no matter what it's just if you want to accept it you got time or not to depend on what you're chasing you can sit down and, you know, D'Angelo, you know, one of the greatest artists we ever had, took, I don't know how long to put out that next album. You know, he's still D'Angelo. I mean, I don't care about nobody's financials or where they rank on nobody all timeless. Like, what do the music sound like? So you do have the time if you want to take it. And I think that's something that we need to tell more people. Like, you only got to do what's, you know, best for your art. You look at the biggest artists in the world, they ain't dropping every year. You know, they're not using social media neither. They're not doing nothing that they tell you have to do. They're not doing press. All the stuff that they tell you have to do to become the biggest artist in the world, none of the biggest artists in the world do it. Lauren, and I Lauren think that Hill, just goes man. to show that the importance of the music. Lauren had one record. That's ever. In, I actually meant like the songs are four to, you know, three to eight minutes, where, whereas a movie is, you have a lot much more time to develop your idea. Well, I mean, it, not, that, it's not necessarily the same thing. In a sense, you can look at those like in uh, structures that have act breaks and scenes and things like that. So it's like it's like going song by song is like going scene by scene. Like we're making albums at the end of the day, you know what I mean? And especially that's the format in which we were, what I grew up on. So I didn't care about nobody's song. It's like what your album sound like, and the songs were a part of the album. And um, that's kind of just how I always looked at music. Like I never cared about what nobody's single was. Like I think that's the dumbest face of earth to be like, oh, what's the single? Like I don't care. Like this is a, a body of art that you're trying to stand the test of time. I'm pretty sure Stevie Wonder has singles, but it's fucking Stevie Wonder. Like, <laughs> turn it on and listen to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now I think we should. I think if we get back to that, like we do ourselves justice by being able to be like, all right, we have you know songs in the key of life again. Hopefully, you know what I mean. Low end theory, you know, it has a single and it's a big song, but it's the low end theory. You know what I mean? Like we can do that. We just have to allow ourselves to be able to do that. People say reasonable doubt, like within it, you know what I mean? Like they don't say, you know, their presence. They do, but it's reasonable doubt. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. What what new artists, new artists you rock with, man? Is there anybody new? Or can you turn us on to somebody new we may not know that we should be checking for? Uh, Reggie, 
I'm from Houston. It's really good. Uh, Pink Panther is really good. Uh, look at my phone and see, because I don't listen to music like that. New is a new is an interesting word. Um, yeah, I, I Reggie, Reggie, I really like Reggie music a lot. He got like five songs, but. Do you ever make playlists for yourself? Oh, no. Nah. You just go to the album and listen to different songs on the album? I listen to albums, but I don't listen to songs. Like, because unless it's a, you made a song to be heard by itself, like an actual single, but I listen to albums, I don't ever like. I'm not, I'm not taking the art out of the context in which the art is created. You know what I mean? Like, I listen to albums, I've never just turned, of course you have certain songs you turn on, like, like some of the clashes. If you want to listen like a random, like, big song, but I listen to albums. Yo, you know what? Slim Thug is beat king. An artist? Yeah. A rapper? Yeah. Oh, I know B King. B King is art. Like strip club music. Or mm. music they be playing in the strip club. He got a record that's hard as a bitch. For real? Yes. Slim played it on his birthday on his um, on his IG. Mm hmm So Reggie, we gotta check out Reggie? Yeah, Reg yeah, Reggie, uh, Reggie Southside is a uh, probably uh, one of my favorite songs I've heard in a long time. But I listen like, yeah, I listen to the same songs over and over again, or, or I listen to albums. And he don't really got an album, he just got uh, singles out. But Southside is good, uh, Can't Stop Me, Reggie, uh, Monty Booker, and uh, Kenny Beast is really good. Um, J.I.D. put out a really, really great album uh, this year. Yeah, man, um, there's so much music out, man. And like everybody's story is so, you know, integral to, you know, their own existence, so. I, I, I just listen to everything that come out, bro. Like, it's not, I don't look at something and be like, oh, I'm not finna listen to that. If somebody, like, walk past me on the street and like, hey, bro, listen to my music. Like, I'm gonna listen to their whole album. Because, you know, it's just a part of their story. It's, it's conversational for me. Like, listening to somebody's album is like a conversation. It's, you know, them telling you who they are, at least in that moment. So that's kind of how I digest music. This was awesome. Yeah. As always, yeah. Vince is a special dude. But no, I appreciate y'all, man, definitely. I appreciate all the love and support and the help, knowledge, everything that, you know, y'all give me whenever we cross paths, all of y'all. So I appreciate you. Sure, you already know. Pleasure, bro. man, talking to you. Always. You already know you're different. Yeah, you're one of the ones.